Welcome to Real Liberty Media, where thinking is required and civility not always mandatory, but suggested. To make yourself at home on our website, please join in the chats. Feel free to make your comments. Listen to our podcasts and join our live streams whenever you can. Please share and subscribe. Help us grow our channel and thank you for joining us. Welcome to the Age of Vision radio show with your host, Lonnie Clark. We stand together and accept we now live in a world transformed by the nuclear industry. We expose and confront the intentional neglect and disregard for life on our planet by atomic energy. Consider social engineering programs who view our bodies, minds, and souls as assets on a balance sheet. We discuss vital current issues, interview activists, and engage our audience in an effort to allow all voices to be heard. We encourage our listeners to reclaim their power and their courage to take action to save our planet from the ravages of greed and indifference. Every voice matters. Our actions matter. We remind our listeners that happiness is resistance. Love is greater than fear. Good afternoon. This is your host, Lonnie Clark, with the Age of Fission radio show. I want to thank you for joining us, and I'm very excited today to have you with us, um, Steve Seltzer, Seltzer uh, who is a with the United Public Workers for Action, and he is a labor journalist. And I got I contacted Steve to do an interview with us for this show because I've been researching Treasure Island, which is uh, many of you who listen to my show have probably never heard me talk about this. I actually only found out about it through Steve's YouTube videos. Um, about three or four months ago, I saw a video that popped up, and I don't know why I haven't been seeing him, because when I looked into this earlier, there's a lot more videos out there. So thank you, Steve, for joining us. I really appreciate it. Sure. Happy to be here. Well, look, why don't you share with our listeners exactly what the issues with Treasure Island and Hunter's Point and maybe the connection between the two of those are and exactly where they're at and why this matters to the people in the United States. Well, Treasure Island, uh, Hunter's Point is uh, the southern part of San Francisco, and it was a military naval base, as is Treasure Island. And they were developed during the war uh, to make ships, but also they became bases to investigate the effects of radiation. So the first naval radiological laboratory in the United States was built on Hunter's Point, and uh, they, they tested animals. They also tested human beings, and they brought back ships that had been contaminated in the Bikini Islands uh, with hydrogen blasts, hydrogen bomb blasts. And the reason they towed these ships had been contaminated back to uh, Hunter's Point and Treasure Island was they wanted to see if they could be uh, recommissioned or refurbished after being in a nuclear blast. So mm-hmm. they sandblasted them, and the uh, radioactive material got all over uh, Hunter's Point and Treasure Island. It's filled with material. So this went on for 30 years, and Treasure Island was also a naval uh, uh, weapons uh, training uh, facility in radioactive bl- uh, blasts. So naval uh, personnel and their families were brought to the island, and they did tests there on uh, a ship called the Pandemonium, what would happen if there was a nuclear blast as far as uh, checking for the radioactivity. So that the island has been thoroughly contaminated with radioactive materials for many, many years, decades. Now, when you say so, Treasure Island, I, I, excuse me for interrupting. It's, it's but, an okay. island between San Francisco and Oakland. Okay, that's it's what I wanted to know. an artificial island made in 1939 with sand. Uh, they filled up sand, and, and the World's Fair was on Treasure Island. Is that why they made it for the World's Fair? Did they do it for the World? They War? made it for that, yeah. And it was also used as a as a uh, okay. base for for airlines. Pan Am flights were on that for a while. Wow. So it's you know it's a man-made island filled with sand on the bay, which is sinking. And uh, wow. what happened was is that uh, politicians, Willie Brown 
one of them, but Nancy Pelosi and Diane Feinstein saw the potential of uh, making money by building condos on Hunters Point and Treasure Island. It has great views, million dollar views on Treasure Island particularly. So they began the process of transferring uh, Treasure Island from the Navy to the city and county of San Francisco. And they set up a special district uh, which was uh, not subject to all the laws of, uh, of San Francisco, rent control and that kind of thing. And they began to put uh, poor people, African Americans, on the old housing that was for the Navy. And one of the things they did is they, they had the planning departments and planning you know uh, planners come from San Francisco to do an investigation about the feasibility of building uh, uh, condos and skyscrapers. And the report that they came out with is that the uh, because of the fact that it's landfill and it's on a earthquake prone area, yeah. which is the Bay Area, that the likelihood is if there was a major earthquake, it would uh, liquefy. The island would liquefy. Oh my God! So that was the report, and these two planners were kind of retaliated against it, and they buried the report. Uh, about the dangers of building on Treasure Island. Wow. Yeah. So, in any event, uh, they continued to develop, and uh, they did. Uh, uh, they said they, they were going to remediate, and Nancy Pelosi, in her position as a congresswoman and also uh, head of the Democratic uh, Congress, uh, steered money from the Navy to clean it up from the U.S. government, and over a billion dollars was appropriated to clean up Hunters Point and Treasure Island. And they, um, we uh, found out, I found out from whistleblowers that there were serious problems. In the first place, there's a company called Test America, which is the largest testing company in the United States. And Test America does, uh, was doing tests on uh, Hunters Point uh, asbestos tests. And they were coming back 100% negative. Now, Hunters Point has turpentine. It is a it is highly asbestos mm. uh, asbestos uh, material on on that area. So, the uh, two quality assurance managers at Test America said that there had to be some problem. You don't have you can never have 100% right. negative test. So they began to investigate, and they found out that uh, that the testing had been changed by a company. Uh, Test America had been bought out by a hedge fund called HIG Capital. HIG Capital bought Test America, and they, one of the things they did to increase their profits was reduce the time to test uh, for asbestos from 15 minutes to about 50 seconds. What? Yeah. And so our government paid. paid for that test. That's right. Yeah. God damn. So they they um you know the test so the, you know they, it was basically they were gaming they had a game pad and they wow. were basically gaming and testing. What on, year on, was on that? Point, that Treasure Island. Uh, this was in the nineties. Wow, that's when the that uh, that was really when the the assault. Two thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know this so what happened was is that and this is part of the corruption component of the story, and San Francisco now is enveloped in a major historic corruption crisis. Uh, Mohammed Nuru, who is the head of the Department of Public Health, him and another restaurateur were arrested for corruption as far as uh, getting contracts and kickbacks. And uh, Nuru has a long history of uh, middle, uh, um, being involved in pay payoffs and and corruption in the city of San Francisco for construction projects. In any event, uh, what happened was is that uh, Michael Madry and another uh, worker there were fired. There were quality managers, uh, management people, quality assurance managers, and they went to uh, a guy named uh, Daryl Whitman, who's a lawyer with Federal OSHA. And uh, under the law, federal laws, if you're retaliated for making health and safety complaints and you file a federal complaint they do they're supposed to do an investigation and if you have been fired for making health and safety complaints that he they issue a mere determination you get your job back mm -hmm. so uh 
Daryl Whitman, who is, a, as I said, a lawyer in the OSHA, did an investigation, and he came to the conclusion that uh, Michael Madry had been fired uh, because of uh, his health and safety complaints concerning this testing of asbestos. So what happened was is that uh, his his boss, who was a, also a lawyer, um, uh, asked him to change the report wow. that he had made, which is a felony, and his boss was also a lawyer. He refused to do that, and he was bullied and later fired from federal OSHA. Hmm. And now is involved in a major case of whistleblowers, federal federal whistleblowers all over the United States against the Inspector Generals of the United States, which is a national case, actually. Uh, In any event, um, they continued, uh, so uh, they they hired this company called Tetra Tech, which is the largest uh, uh, remediation company uh, in the country as far as cleanup and remediation of uh, toxic dump sites. You said that was Tetra Tech? Tetra Tech, yeah. And Tetra Tech... Uh, is involved in all kinds of cleanups of toxic sites. I think they're involved the in uh, up here in Hanford, too. I've heard that uh, name. Han- uh, yeah, Hanford is, is probably the case, too. So uh, so what happened was is they the, they started to do remediation and moving the earth around and, and, and testing, and a number of whistleblowers, there were six workers who worked who were nuclear radioactive uh health and safety investigators noticed that the tests were being falsified, that they were uh, improperly moving material. They were allowing um, contaminated radioactive material to leave the site without proper inspection. It was being put in dumps, other dumps without, you know, were were not proper dumps. And uh, they found uh, radioactive material there, which had supposedly been what year was that? What year was that? This was in uh, 2018, you know, uh, 17, okay. Very recently. 16. Okay. This was also uh, uh, Kamala Harris, who was also the district attorney in San Francisco, knew about the fact that these workers who had raised these health and safety complaints were, were uh, bullied and fired. So there were six Tetra Tech workers who Did were she fired stand up for, for them, by the way? No. Of no. course not. Yeah. No, she didn't stand up. I mean, she was, she was a, a previous girlfriend of Willie Brown, and uh, hmm. she w- was not interested in uh, enforcing the law as far as the protection of these workers. They also hired a city, uh, Willie Brown, uh, the, the major developer of uh, Hunters Point, and a developer in Treasure Island is the Lenar Corporation. Lenar Home Building, which is the largest home building company in the United States. And one of the things that Willie Brown did is he allowed them uh, to pay for a, an environmental engineer for the city and county of San Francisco, a woman named Amy Brownell. So she was hired by the city as an environmental engineer, and she, her salary was paid for by the Lenar Home Builders, the developers. Hmm. And she was telling people that everything was okay, don't worry, there's no problem. I think so she has, that's is, what they hired her for. They always hire women to write these reports. And, uh, you know, she's uh, she still works, as a matter of fact, for the city and county of San Francisco wow. under uh, the mayor of London Bree. So so what happened is, uh, so they uh, they built homes, and uh, what the there was a, an investigation of a fraud by... Uh, Tetra Tech and two managers were tried, were in de- investigated and indicted by the U.S. Attorney, and they went to prison wow. for falsifying tests. So, but it didn't go beyond that. You know, they didn't go to the executives and the top managers, and they also didn't go to uh, Nancy Pelosi, who um, whose cousin Lawrence Pelosi was the vice president what? for property development for uh, Lennar Corporation. What did they get convicted of? Uh, fraud, committing fraud on the federal government. For they falsifying were, the tests. Falsifying de- so uh, yeah, And the, false my question tests. about that is, they oh, so they they know that the tests were falsified, but was there any government effort to go back and correct the tests? and to fight? Well, what happened was, as a result of this scandal, uh, the government said that they would retest. 
Mm-hmm. But, but the retesting is only on a surface level. They've already built 300 homes, 300 condos wow. on that land. So they built it over contaminated material. And there's a thing, you know, these are super fun sites, actually. They're highly contaminated, highly yeah. dangerous. And my view is you're really never going to clean them up. That's right. That's because right. after decades of being contaminated, it's, it's like impossible. And well, so I mean, can't... even if it was newly, you're not going to, all you do when you, quote, clean up nuclear contamination is move it from one place to that's, another that's place. Right. You're that's not right. fixing so it, the solution. Exactly. So, uh so it's highly contaminated, and, you know, this is super fun. So, and this government has spent over a billion dollars on this supposed cleanup and wow. testing, over a billion. So it's the largest eco-scandal in the United States. Wow. Because they've spent over a billion dollars, and uh, and they admit now that there was fraud and that it wasn't done properly. So you would think that, you know, the congressman uh, uh, Pelosi, uh Diane Feinstein, who's the senator, Kamala Harris, would say there should be congressional investigation. Who's their representative? About what happened. Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi is their congressional representative? That's right. And she's just... Now, are they making any effort to move the people who live in those 300 homes off the island? Well, the, the 300 homes are now stuck with them, and they're suing Lennar Corporation. And one of the complaints that they're making is wow. that... Uh, they were they had concerns about the radar activity, and the developer Lennar uh, t- uh, turned them over to Amy Brunell from the city to to comfort them and tell them basically that the uh, homes were wow. safe. Well, so they actually had a Lennar paid employee for the city and county of San Francisco telling them that the homes were safe. So now the banks have said that we're not going to loan on the homes. They're having problems selling the homes on Hunters Point now. Getting back to, to Treasure Island, Treasure Island, oh, that's Hunter's point. as I said, was a uh, training facility for nuclear warfare okay. for the Navy. So they used actual radioactive material on the island. They had a ship called the Pandemonium, which was a training ship. What happens if there's oh, a nuclear blast? Yeah. yeah. So this island is, is, you know, again, a super fun site. But for some reason... Is Treasure when, Island uh, a fake island also? Yeah, Treasure Island is a fake island. Sand. It's a sand. And Hunter's Island. Point? Hunter's Point is an actual, uh, it's not a island, it's a part of San Francisco. Okay. It's Southeast a, part of San Francisco. Okay, thank you. All right. So uh, what happened in, in Treasure Island, they, a lot of the uh, families with their naval families were getting sick because they were not told that it's dangerous. They had a school called the Treasure Island Elementary School where kids were getting sick. In fact, the school was built right next to uh, a dump, a burn site. For radioactive oh my material. God. So and uh, you know to build a school on a site the like usual. that. It's the usual, it's, just it's, like in St. Yeah. Louis, the same thing. The same thing, yeah. So, so the the uh, what they did was is the people housing poor people, African American people, of course, others were put in the housing there, the government housing, uh, to, and they weren't told about the dangers, and they began to get sick, and they also put a, a job corps training facility there without telling them that they were getting sick. Steve, can I ask you a question? It's kind of, uh, it's on this topic, but it's a, got a, I have a different, I, I'm, I'm in search of this answer. Um, how long have you been reporting on this? How long has this been going on that you know about? Oh, you know, maybe 15 years, 20 years. Right, exactly. I've been doing my radio podcast for five years now, six years, since 2014. And I am, the number one theme that comes across loud and clear is there is a, two things, blanket disregard for human life to this day when it comes to nuclear. Number two is the nuclear denial. The 100% blanket denial that everybody in power, they look at each other, they give themselves that look like if anybody cracks, the whole thing is going to fall. So there is. that's why people, this is why whistleblowers, anybody who goes after them, they are, they are uh, painfully reminded that they don't matter. There is a complete disregard for human life. Well, that is true. They know people have been getting Now, how to, can, to this is the thing. Here's Nancy Pelosi, one of, in fact, arguably the most powerful woman in the country. Mm-hmm. Her own constituents living on a catastrophe that was created in World War II. 
at the very least, where is the humanity of moving people off of that island and saying, okay, we got it wrong, we messed up, we'll move everybody off the well, island. But, but these, okay, but these people are criminals. Yes, uh, they Michael are. Madry, but you know what? The whole thing we joined Michael the club. Madry with, went, Michael Madry went to the U.S., went to Pelosi and provided her with all the material. Yeah, but the, you know why it doesn't testing. matter? Because the, the whole nuclear industry is a criminal enterprise. If you've ever, well, read, I mean, well, that's that is true. But the politicians who are supposed to be accountable to the people have been in collusion with the industry. I mean, in fact, these government agencies, which are supposed to be doing oversight and protection of the public, have been captured by the very companies they're supposed right. to regulate. That's called fascism. Okay, so there's systemic mm-hmm. corruption and corporate takeover of the government. That's you know. And this collusion now is starting to blow up in San Francisco because of the endemic corruption. Well, you know why. A suit was filed last uh, last week, a $2 billion billion suit uh, by Stanley Goff, a lawyer for the the residents. What's that guy's name? I saw him on television, and you know what? I never saw his name, and I looked on YouTube, and I couldn't find his name. Stanley Goff. Stanley Goff. G-O-F-F is the lawyer for these residents. And they had trouble finding a lawyer. I bet uh, they who did. Would, would take their case. So anyway, he filed a suit and um, in against Tetra Tech, against uh, uh, the city and county of San Francisco, against the U.S. Navy, wow. uh, against the California, which is supposed to be the testing, uh, you know, certifying the testing, and uh, you know, it's it's a wide ranging lawsuit. So I hope his children are safe. I hope he has security on his family. Well, the the. What has happened is that people have been terrorized, they've been harassed, uh, people have died on the island. Wow. Uh, and uh, when you have that kind of high level of contamination, people get sick, they have rashes, they have all kinds yeah. of illness. So Not only that, but, their children and their children. Helen Callicott says four to seven generations is when we're going to yeah. see the worst of the So, so what, what people have to understand is you've got a criminal enterprise running the U.S. government at yeah. this point. Yeah. And that Nancy Pelosi, Diane Feinstein's husband, uh, Richard Blum, was involved with uh, the construction company Lennar. He's mm-hmm. a developer. Um, so these people are benefiting personally mm-hmm. from this uh, construction project. And it's interesting that the Republicans, which proclaim that they're really against corruption themselves, have uh, are not even pursuing any corruption charges against Nancy Pelosi and Diane Feinstein and Kamala Harris and and Gavin Newsom, who was also involved in covering up the corruption when he was mayor of San Francisco. So this is uh, really a uh, uh, systemic you know, corruption it's systemic. war, and it's centered, yeah. it's, centered, it's centered in San Francisco. And the leadership of the Democratic Party is implicated because one of the things that happened when Daryl Whitman uh, he was fired and he filed a complaint at, with the at mm. that time the Secretary of the Department of Labor which runs OSHA. And the secretary of the Department of Labor was Tom Perez. Wow, was it really? Yes. That took me by surprise. Oh, my gosh. No wonder. And Tom, and, and Tom Perez uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. obstructed justice by refusing to have an independent uh-huh. investigation of the firing of Daryl Whitman. Wow. It's required if a federal employee is, a whistleblower is fired uh, they have to have an investigation. Okay, he so then for one, this is a bigger for one question. And, and, I bet and I have Tom a... Perez personally obstructed. He knew about the case, and he actually conspired uh, with the uh, Inspector General to prevent an investigation of the firing of uh, of uh, Daryl Whitman. You're talking Tom Perez, the now DNC chair. That's correct. That's Correct. what I thought you meant. I have a That's bigger question because you know what that really leads me to? Because as you're explaining this about San Francisco and looking at Nancy Pelosi's rise to power, you know, I, I'm one of those that have been spitting nails. I actually, I troll her and call her Trojan Horse Pelosi because I think she's playing this like a fiddle. She wants the system status quo. There's no way she wants Trump out of office. And so, uh, but this is a bigger question. You know, Nancy Pelosi took impeachment off the table right after she saw she and Jane Harmon and saw the Abu Ghraib photos of the torture. She she knows exactly what was going on, As, and this was right after she became 
the uh, Speaker of the House in 2006. You may know yeah. this. And she yeah, took impeachment off the table. And Jane Harmon, the other female that they uh, that was in power to see it, she wrote the uh, t- Homegrown Terrorist Act, which basically is the coup d'etat of the Unpatriot Act that takes away most of your rights. Like they can just, this is what happened with uh, uh, um, Chelsea Manning, just thrown in jail when they feel like it. I mean, yep. but this is my bigger question because you've been active in this because you're, I sort of looked you up. I, I don't know you for a full disclosure for our listeners. I, I subscribe to a email, um, uh, subscription list where I got and I see Steve Seltzer's name and his work all the time and I never reached out to him but then when I've been researching this Treasure Island thing I thought that because of Steve's reporting that he probably knew a lot about it and I am so right <laughs> but well the the latest thing is that they they put these charter schools they put a one charter school I know uh, and now they want to put another charter school on uh, the old Treasure Island Elementary School, and that there's going to be hearing on the fifth uh, of this month, uh, February, to to discuss this uh, placement of this charter school. So, I, a doctor, Dr. Navin Gordon, testified at the Board of Education, and we're going to be going to the this TIDA, this nonprofit agency, government agency, to oppose the placement of a charter school on the old Treasure Island Elementary School. But the fact that they would consider putting children in a highly contaminated dump site. Radioactive dump site is, is criminal in itself. It is criminal. So uh, so that's what we have to let people know about and oppose. And behind it is all the other corruption and decades of really conspiring. It was a Superfund uh, site, and for some reason it was taken off the list of, of Superfund sites. Well, to all of our listeners, you please go to Steve's YouTube channel and look at all the videos on this because there is a lot of information. It's called Labor Video. That's how I that's what I subscribe to. And this is where you can on all of this it goes back it, th- but this is the point here. You guys are at least at least you have advocates who are pushing through and getting this into the courts and people are challenging them. And they're making incre- – this is what Larry Bergen – do you know Larry Bergen out of St. Louis? He was in the first no. secret city. I, may, I think I may have heard of him, yeah. Yeah, he was one of the victims of the first secret city. And he and I talk – he doesn't come on my radio show because he's in litigation and his attorneys don't want to mess up his scene. You know, like he's very close to getting paid. He was the very first victim in Illinois to be granted unemployment benefits. Of course, it's the usual. Even when you win in court – they delay, delay, delay until you're practically dead, so they don't have to pay you. So, well, it's it's you know uh, it's rigged. The system is rigged against workers, against whistleblowers, and against people. Who it's are, rigged against human you know, life. Like, when you're talking about nuclear, this is not just like oh, payola, we get to make money and build a bunch of buildings, and we're doing it on land that we misappropriated or stole or whatever. We're talking long term. It's kind of like. Uh, Trump unleashing the EPA and disregarding, you know, Trump actually recently, you know, has reclassified high levels of nuclear contamination to low levels so they can transport it on the highways. And he's preventing the safety, nuclear safety defense board from going on site at Hanford and at all the legacy sites. Mm -hmm. So this is an assault on humanity. And this was my point. They always love to have women do these things. I think I made this comment earlier when you mentioned this lady, Amy Bro- Brown Browell. I think you said her Brownell. name was Brownell. Brownell. Yeah. Like, honestly, I honestly, not to have, like, I guess this is why I'm kind of a tin, like people call me a tinfoil hatter. I think this is an overall arching frame of a picture here where we have women who are married to high powered men who basically have been using the government. I mean, their businesses, I actually noticed that about Diane Feinstein. Her husband has a big investment in a lot of military contracts. Well, when she was, when Diane Feinstein was chair of the Senate Military Appropriations Committee, she was illegally steering contracts to her husband, who was with Perini Construction, for military, military construction in, uh, in Iraq. 
So there's a long history of financial collusion and financial corruption uh, of these politicians and uh, never any accountability for these people for illegal activity. If you or I defrauded the federal government, we'd be in jail. These people are defrauding it every day, and That's they're not sure. being held accountable. So it's a double standard, and it's growing. Actually, what's happening now in the United States, and not just the United States, all over the world, is there are major corruption scandals all over the world. Yeah. And that's leading to rebellions in Lebanon and in many, many countries, Egypt, all over the world. In France. In, in, in France, in, the in firemen France. are fighting the police. <laughs> they want to privatize, yeah, privatize the uh, education and the pensions of public workers. So th that's going on here, too. And I think people have an illusion in this country that the politicians are going to take care of the problems. Mm hmm like, That's in other words, true. impeachment is going to solve the problem about, about Trump and uh, that, that the, the legislative process, which is controlled by these same corrupt politicians, is going to solve our political, social, economic crisis. I don't believe that. Well, uh, it's there needs true. To be a mass movement. Although I do think that Trump control. is, a, is a, a different kind of threat because uh, it's, he's so covert. Like, he is a malicious, he, he's a malicious person who has... To me, I think he is, he needs to be removed immediately. But well, I would say Pelosi and Feinstein should be. Removed <clears throat> I agree with you one hundred percent. Pelosi should be removed immediately, and so should and Feinstein. Yet there, and yet there are no there are no charges. There's no investigation. Yeah, well, you can't even uh, you talk you talk about politically incorrect for a woman to call Nancy Pelosi Trojan horse Pelosi. <laughs> but I think she is really like there's. Well, I call them Republicans. They're not really Republicans. They're not really Democrats. They're Republicans and reps. Well, but the the you know? the uh, Republican parties, the Democrats, you know, the Democrats yeah. and Republican Party are both the same. That's right. And they represent the same interests. So That's it's right. not surprising that whoever is in government, whoever is a Democrat or Republican, you have the same uh, the same policies. I mean, because uh, it's NAFTA, run by the industrial military I mean, complex. That's, that's the bottom right. line. I mean, that's, and you know, this is what's going on. However, I think what's happening now which is new, is that the corruption, the systemic corruption is starting to blow up, and it's going to be hard to contain. And in San Francisco in particular, this corruption like other cities in the United States has been going on for decades, but now uh, this arrest of uh, this guy from the DPW, Mohammed Nuru, could lead to an indictment of the mayor, London Breed, who was actually a brought in by Willie Brown to be in charge of the development of Treasure Island. Wow. That was one of her first jobs. She was hired by Willie Brown to be uh, in charge of de helping to develop Treasure Island. So there's a, uh, a trail, a criminal trail of these people um, throughout the development project of Hunters Point and, and Treasure Island. Because when, when people think in the United States and in the world, why would you want to build housing, condos, on a radioactive dump site? Are you insane? Well, Are you insane? They, but, but they, not, they, they, not they don't care. United. See, it's, it's the reason that we're having the Olympics in Tokyo. Well, the same thing. It's the, the normalization of radioactivity because you can't taste it, see it, feel it. or And we, there's been very little testing that directly – they don't do accurate testing with radioactive contamination. Well, I, I've been t I did a documentary on Fukushima called two documentaries, uh, Fukushima Never Again, it's on YouTube, Fukushima Never Again, and also um, on uh, Fukushima and the Olympics, um, and uh, why they're saying that they should have the Olympics in Fukushima. Are you criminally insane? Is Abe criminally insane? So I've been to Fukushima, and I've investigated. There are thousands, tens of thousands of bags of radioactive contaminated waste surrounding Fukushima. There's a million and a half tons of radioactive water in tanks surrounding the Fukushima broken nuclear plants. They've been unable to remove the melted nuclear rods in the Fukushima nuclear plants because they're too radioactive. So they use water to keep them cool. Yet the Prime Minister of Japan, Abe, said that they have uh, decontaminated Fukushima and it was safe and they didn't have to worry to have the Olympics there. The I International Olympic or, uh, Committee supported that, knowing that it is not safe. On top of that, they are having the Olympics this coming year in August, the hottest time of the year. The government is requisitioning ambulances 
because of the heat wave, global warming, there's massive heat waves uh, that is, could create a heat wave and uh, the death of, uh, of the athletes and other people because of the high temperatures in August. The reason they're having well, not even the Olympic, that. the reason they're having the Olympics in August is because NBC does not want the Olympics to compete with the uh, football games in October. So this is all about money. And, is that the, really uh, the reason why they're having yes. it in uh, August? Yes, that's the real reason. NBC does not want the Olympics in October because they would compete with football. A book is being written, has been written, we're going to be publishing it fairly soon, on, on Fukushima and the Olympics, about Good. the history of the Olympics, the corruption of the Olympics, and, and you... how, it, how it was arranged to have the Olympics in Fukushima. Um, it's greenwashing, it's telling people, propagandizing people that everything's safe, be happy. That's right. It's uh, normalizing radio... About Mm-hmm. You don't have to worry about the radioactive materials. That's so right. It's, Radi- uh, it's normalizing radioactive contamination. That's the entire goal of the nuclear industry. That's their entire thrust. All of their conversations are about that. It's, it's, and, you know, it, it's, a, it's a nuclear industry controls, like other industries, the U.S. government. Yes. So that's why, that's the only reason. I mean, how can you have a condo project, housing project, on a radioactive nuclear dump? And pretend like it's okay. It's safe. They're saying they're still saying Nancy Pelosi and Diane Feinstein and Gavin Newsom and and London Breed, who's the mayor, all say that it's safe. They're but saying that. That's because that's what they're being told by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. They all no, believe it. No, no, no. Actually, they're criminals. You're wrong. They're criminals. They know it. It is not safe. In fact. London Breed, the mayor of San Francisco, her own relatives got cancer on Hunter's Point. Wow. They know it's not safe. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. Yes, I get you, but the the level of denial. To know that these are dangerous sites. Yes. I mean, people have been contaminated and poisoned for decades on the site. So we're talking about criminality of of a huge proportion. When you have all the top officials in San Francisco who are engaged in a massive criminal cover-up it is the of end, a nuclear radioactive site Steve, to make money to build The point condos. is, this is the IAEA's model, period. Every nation, this is what I call the nuclear denial. Every nation on every planet worldwide has nuclear denial. All of their elected officials, all of them will deny that, yes, even though we had an accident five years later, everything's fine perfectly fine, and no government commissions a study on children or infants anymore. No government commissions health effects on people dying of high rates of cancer. Why do we have schizophrenia? Well, why, why is there an epidemic of cancer in the exactly. United States? Exactly. I mean, it's, it's taken as happenstance. This is the normal you know, thing that people get cancer. Why? Why is that the case? And the reason is, is that the industry, which have captured the government agencies, do not want to be held liable for what they're doing. Even the oil industry, their oil refineries, people get cancer on these oil refineries. There's no requirement, for example, when you go to healthcare, which is privately run, that if you have cancer, exactly. you have to report where you where you lived and what you may have been contaminated with. That should be a requirement. That's if you had national health care in this country, and it wasn't run by the insurance industry, which wants to limit their liability. When you go in for a disease like cancer, they have a epistemology of where you came from. Where, where did you get these, uh, what, what could be uh, factors in your cancer or your illness? That should be a, a no-brainer for people in this country when they get sick. Where did you live? What were you contaminated with? But in the United States, because of capitalism, and that's really what we're talking about. That's right. You know, that's they're right. not interested in finding those connections. because Not it would just capitalism. But it's a system of capitalism that it runs is. the United States. The militarism, the fascism is well, really supports Well, capitalism is, you know, true. makes money from wars. I That's mean, every right. bomb that they drop is more money. So it's a profiteering system. And, yeah. You know, uh, the nuclear industry is very profitable. The oil industry, you know, these industries are profitable, and they control the agencies which are supposed to regulate them. So we have a, a, an organization called Bay Area Air Quality uh, Management District. Uh, which is supposed to regulate the air in Northern California. And the executives fired some uh, uh, document managers who were 
who are trying to stop the destruction of documents, which is illegal, of companies that had been polluting. And they were fired, and not one politician, it's the board of politicians that run it, have called for an independent investigation. So we're demanding that uh, the, the new district attorney, Chesson Bowden, uh, and the state attorney general, um, uh, Becerra, Xavier Becerra, do an investigation of this corruption in San Francisco. And, um, you know, to, put, to, to say that you have to be responsible to investigate and prosecute these criminals, because why is it that, that there's been no prosecution of this guy, Nuru? Over decades he's been doing this. Um, he was involved in manipulating the election uh, uh, for, to bring Newsom into office. He, he was in control of some nonprofit workers at a company called Sludge, and they had a contract with the city and county of San Francisco, and he was ordering these workers to do election campaigning for uh, Gavin Newsom, who was running uh, against Matt Gonzalez in, in the mayoral election. This is, like, if you look at the layers of it all, though, doesn't it leak? I mean, like, it seems like someone's playing the piano here. Like, all of these keys kind of play together to create this tune of blanket corruption that, you know, it's like this melody of just go to sleep and we'll take care of you. I mean, it's a really... Well, it's a culture, it's a culture of corruption. I mean, I, I don't know if you've seen that from Dirty Water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a culture of corruption, and, yes. and uh, this these companies, again, control communities, they control the politicians, and there's no accountability, there's no criminal prosecution. In California, for example, one of the cases that Gerald Whitman investigated was the Wells Fargo scandal. Right. Wells Fargo set, set up 900,000 fake bank accounts in California, and were fleecing people with illegal bank accounts. And one of the t uh, tellers or uh, bankers in uh, St. Helena, uh, Gittin, um this woman, she was refused to go along with opening up fake bank accounts. Uh, and she was coerced and fired. And she went to OSHA, and they didn't do an investigation. In fact, uh, Obama and his attorney general, Eric Holder, let uh, John Stump, who's the CEO of uh, Wells Fargo leave with $100 million yeah, after it came that. out that they had set up fake bank accounts. Now, if you or I or a regular right, person set jail. up a fake, a fake bank account, we would be in jail. Right. But they set up 900000 There's no criminal prosecution. Just and, an apology. Just an apology. Don't worry. We're sorry we did and, that. You know, they, and these, so there's, these people are criminals, and they're getting away with so, murder. So do you think they're it works? Away. To, you're a what? labor journalist. Do you think people, you know, joining forces and banding, that's what labor unions are about and people, like, well, do you, do you think that is, is what we could do again to really well, reinvigorate? People need to be, uh, yeah, people need to be in unions, but the kind of unions that we have in this country are business unions, are right. corporate unions. That's right. In California, Newsom, the governor, has savaged the uh, OSHA, so there are very few inspectors. There are 200 inspectors for 18 and 19 million workers in California. <laughs> 200 inspectors. There are more fish and game inspectors in California than OSHA inspectors. Yeah. In other words, there are more inspectors for fish and game than there are for workers. There's no regulation of the biotech industry. The biotech companies. There's no regulation in the biotech industry. That's right. Are you saying what? No yeah. regulation. That's right. In the biotech I've, industry. That's right. I mean, you know, and, and people have been contaminated. Pfizer contaminated a a uh, um, molecular biologist, Becky McLean, in, in Pfizer in in, uh, in um, Connecticut, Groton, Connecticut, where they have a factory of six thousand scientists, and uh, she was contaminated, and uh, OSHA officials were involved in covering mm -hmm. it up. So, you know, the wow. OSHA, and this is David Michaels who was running OSHA. And, uh, you know, so you have systemic corruption under it's whether like a it's cancer. Democrats or Republicans. We just talked about is, the cancer is, epidemic is, is, in the United is, States, but we basically well, have cancer, cancer on, the, on our government. We have a cancer on our government. There's a cancer in the, there's a cancer in the system, and that's why people are very angry in the United States, because they see... The corruption, they see mm -hmm. the lack of accountability. It's true. They see the the failure of oversight, and people are angry. And the danger is that people will go to fascism unless working people organize politically. The Democrats and Republicans are run by big business. Period. 
whoever's in. So we need a Labour Party, we need a Workers' Party in this country that is controlled by working people. Um, so we have a, a political alternative. We don't have a real political alternative in this country. That is very uh, true. We really don't. So how do we organize that? How do we get that together? Are there people doing something like that already? Well, there's a, there's a movement, I mean, to, uh, first of all, it's important that people be in unions so that they have some collective power. Yeah. Um, but there has to be a movement for a, a Labor Party, a Workers' Party. There was a, a Labor Party in the, in the 90s, uh, but it was uh, it had 16,000 members, but it was used by the leadership as a leverage on the Democrats, not really as a as a political party. But right now, in, for example, in California, the same in Oregon, the Democrats control these states. That's right. There's a Democratic governor. There's a Democratic legislature. That's right. Uh, and and yet you have this corruption. What does that say? It's, you can't blame the Republicans for corruption in California. It's not Trump that's doing this. This state is like Oregon is run by Democrats. That's right. So that needs to raise the question to people. We need a real political alternative. Well, this was the weird it's part. Of, it seems like anybody, this is the weird, this is why I think that there's like this underlying theme. It doesn't matter what political party, once they get into the governorship or the White House or into the Senate or into the Congress, they all click their heels and say, Sig Heil. And yeah, the, but, that, that, but those are, in this country, we only have the Democrats and Republicans. It's a winner take all. We don't have a yeah. proportional it's representation. True. So basically, the Democrats and Republicans are both big business part. That's right. That's all. In they fact, we, meaning that we're all left out of the whole, all of their, cons well, this is why we have Obamacare are, instead of Medicare for all. Well, that's, look what happened in the last major depression or 2008 when millions of people lost their homes. Yeah. And uh, Obama signed the TARP right. bill, which uh, was supposed to have a clause allowing people who are threatened with losing their home by going to federal court. It used to be in the United States, if you were going to lose your home, you could go to a federal judge and negotiate with the judge to protect your home. Guess who took that clause out of, of the TARP? We know. It was Obama. It was Obama. Yeah, and, and so now we have Steve Mnuchin, who profited from that very action, now the head of the United States Treasury. <laughs> and, and Steve Mnuchin was kept in power, or, or not prosecuted, by Kamala Harris, who was Attorney General when he was illegally stealing homes from people in California. And he was stealing homes and making people homeless. He is he one. Was, he, was steal, he was stealing homes from Cal, California, and Kamala Harris refused to prosecute him, even though her attorneys were saying he should be prosecuted. Wow. And this is Kamala Harris, who is a protege of Willie Brown, who was put in office in part by the support of Willie Brown, uh, and was district attorney in San Francisco when this crime and corruption was taking place at Hunters Point and Treasure Island. She was the city attorney at that time. So there's a path uh, and a history of corruption, systemic corruption, and these politicians who proclaim that they're different are actually part of the corruption. What's, what can we do as Americans? Because this is my thing. I've been, my whole thing is, uh, uh, when I've been, especially in the last year, I, I really, I think that it's endemic. The nuclear denial is endemic to, if we could crack that if we could start having people care about being poisoned like that, to me, Americans are so numb to having their rights. They're like battered wives. They don't even stick up. They stand up for the batterers. You know, I mean, it's... It, well, people who are being affected and are being harmed, injured workers, they're deregulated workers' comp, other people have to organize, self-organize. No one is going to do it for you. No one, I mean, people have to organize themselves. And the propaganda in this country is, is somebody else is going to take care of you. That's not how it works. In other words, the only way our, we're going to change this world is when people get involved and change it from the bottom up. That's how change takes place. And, you know, people who try to fight back are harmed and are, you know, are threatened and face big odds, but there's no other way of, uh, of changing anything than getting organized and fighting back. I mean, yeah. we have a situation where the Brown, former Governor Brown, uh, covered up corruption in the division uh, or the Department of Industrial Relations, CIR, which runs Workers' Comp and Cal OSHA, with this woman named Christine Baker. She was putting her daughter on for a, a no-show $129,000 job. Wow. And she was forced to uh, 
uh, there was an audit, a state audit, and a state personnel board audit that said she was uh, corrupt, nepotism, bullying. So she was forced to re resign, and then Brown uh, appointed her just before he left office to be on the Fraud Assessment Commission. No. Yes, where she is right now. So, and Newsom allowed her to take her office. So <coughs> these people um, are very... Uh, so when we say it is a culture of corruption, it is not, it is it's like, it's a serious, hardcore culture of corruption. It is a culture of corruption, yeah, absolutely. That people think that this is the way it's done, this is business as usual, and they're getting away with it. So, you know, they're... they're uh, so I think it's time for us to stop getting it, to get off of our, to get out of the living rooms and out in, you know, out into meeting halls and meet people and figure out well, how to... Well, people have to get, people have to get organized and, and they have to find out what's going on. And if they, if they are being uh, retaliated against and harassed and bullied, they have to stand up and fight back. That's the only way that's going to happen. That's what keeps lawyers, people silent. Lawyers are not going to solve, lawyers that's are not going to solve the problem. Lawyers are not against filing lawsuits. Uh, as a tool, one part of it, but that's only one part of it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, this hour has certainly gone fast. We've actually, uh, at the end of it, is there anything else that you'd like to say to our audience before we leave, Steve? Well, I, I would say that uh, they need to demand that there be accountability and there should be investigations of the corruption in San Francisco of Nancy Pelosi. And uh, the inspector generals, there are 77 inspector generals in, Cal in the United States, 77 departments, and these inspector generals have been conspiring to prevent uh, uh, accountability of the whistleblowers. Do we call our eight. senators? Yeah, call the senators and ask them why, uh, why is this corruption being covered up by the inspector generals. And that's going to be another issue that we're going to be handling with uh, Dale Whitman and other health and safety whistleblowers who have been trying to get justice, trying to protect the public, at you know uh, FedEx and, and Lockheed Martin and, and, and themselves have been retaliated against because of their concern about the public protecting health and safety. Wow. Well, I hope that all of our listeners do. I certainly will start calling my senators on this issue because they hear from me all the time about Hanford and closing the Columbia Generating Station. I'll just add this to the list of them. So. And we'll and you know, I'll keep you informed about this this. A national case about the OSHA and health and safety people at uh, the inspector generals of the United States government. Well, for sure. If you ever want to come back, if, yeah, if anything comes back, for sure, call me and we can give you any, even if we just do a 15, 20 minute podcast, we could get it out and just put it out into the podcast. Sounds good. Well, thanks, thanks for the interview. Well, thank you so much. You guys have been listening to Lonnie Clark with the Age of Vision radio show, and I have been interviewing Steve Seltzer, Z-E-L-T-Z-E-R, uh, and you can find his, it's called Labor Video Project. That's what he runs, and uh, I really appreciate it, Steve. Uh, and, work, and Work Week Radio. And Work Week, work week Radio. Week radio. That, that sounds like your, your, the primary Work Week Radio. How do they find it, workweekradio.com? Work Week on SoundCloud. Say that again. Work week, work week on SoundCloud. Work week on SoundCloud. Okay, I'll put the link in the podcast for those of you that see it. So really very appreciate good. it. Thank you so much. It's been a really delightful, I don't know if it's been delightful, but very informative, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining the Age of Vision radio show with your host, Lonnie Clark. We'll be back next week to bring you more information about the nuclear industry and the harm it's causing our planet and humanity. Find all of our podcasts on Spreaker.com or on YouTube at Nuts for Art, N-U-T-Z-F-O-R-A-R-T. Thank you for being part of the solution. Welcome to Real Liberty Media, where thinking is required and civility not always mandatory, but suggested. To make yourself at home on our website, please join in the chats. Feel free to make your comments. Listen to our podcasts and join our live streams whenever you can. Please share and subscribe. Help us grow our channel and thank you for joining us.